Good morning, Ignite. We are so happy to have you here this morning. Um, will you stand with us before we begin our worship? I'm going to make a little shout out to our online community. Um, our cameras aren't working um, really well today, and that might be for today or next week as well. So we're using kind of a, a different camera, so you may not have the super great angles that we always provide because we're awesome, but you will have one angle. Good luck. <laughs> All right, will you uh, pray before we begin our worship this morning? Dear God, we are just so thankful to be in your house worshiping with you this morning. Bless this service and bless our hearts, Lords, that we may be touched by your hand and your loving grace. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. And in your name we pray. Amen. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Look at your phone, a oh, vagabond. <laughs> and just when I ran out of road, I met a man. told me that I was not alone. You picked me up and turned me around. He placed my feet on the solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior because he healed my heart. He changed my name forever free. I am not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burdens and bitterness, you can't just keep it moving. Nah, no, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. You picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on the solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Forever free, I am not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. You picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on the solid ground. I've been the master, I've been the savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free. I am not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God.
Well, hello. Caitlin's having a coughing fit, so she oh. threw the announcements at me. So Good luck. Um, <laughs> I, will, I will read through them to the best of my abilities. Um, so May mission opportunities will be happening at a Grace Community Cupboard on Wednesday, May 15th from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, they provide personal and home hygiene products to those in need, and we will be uh, helping organize those donations. So if you want to help, um, May 15th from 1 to 3. Um, there are a list of needed items along with a box for donations at the welcome desk, including shampoo, deodorant, toothpaste, or all other cleaner. Uh, contact Katie Garrett if you're interested in helping out. Um, and then any graduating seniors, if you have not applied for the Christian Ministry Scholarship, uh, it is due by May 1st. So um, please apply for them. And then um, the last thing is just making sure that we put all of our plastic bottles in the blue recycling bins. We're just trying to be a little bit more green. So I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if we're distracted with the camera back there. I don't think certain things were working, so we were figuring that out while I was having a coughing attack while trying to sing. So this is also a new song. So good luck to you guys, and I'll try to sing it as best as I can. <laughs> Shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber and he's come to take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. When I hear that trumpet sound, I'm gonna rise up out of the ground. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Oh, fear is a liar with a smooth and velvet tongue. Fear is a tyrant, he's always telling me to run. Oh, love is a resurrection. And love is a trumpet sound. Love is my weapon. I'm gonna take my giants down. There ain't no grave. I'm gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. sound I'm gonna rise up out of the ground there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down Crucified, and he went on down to hell. He took back every key and rose up as a lion, and he set all captives free. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. When 
May be seated. Well, that was a good new one. I appreciate that one. Uh, well, it's so good to see everybody this morning, and I uh, hope you're having a great uh, Sunday morning as we get to be in here and worship together. And it's so good to see each of you. If you'll bow your heads with me, and we'll say a prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we know that. There isn't a grave that will hold you down. Your glory, your power, your majesty, and most importantly, the love that you have for us and the love that you showed us by sacrificing your son on the cross for our sins. Powerful love that will follow us and be there for us as we move through life and as we move into the next, into eternity with you. We give all those things to you, Father, because we know that your love for us is greater than anything that we could ever imagine. And we come together this morning and we share in Jesus' name. Amen. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light. So from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt Of 
Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever to the King of kings. Before I say my prayer, um, I just want to thank Hannah for singing with us these past few weeks. Olivia's been doing some dance competitions, um, and Hannah will be here a few times this summer. So um, thank her, and we appreciate her joining us this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, with you, we are just so thankful for you. There's no grave that can keep us down. Through you, we will be free from sorrow and sin. Until that day, Lord, bless and keep us, that we continue to follow in your word until we can all forever be one. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning again, and what a beautiful morning it is outside. Um, I know that whenever we have a uh, kind of a slow, soft winter, we get a little weary of whether or not the, the warmth is going to continue or uh, we're going to jump backwards. So uh, knock on wood, hopefully I didn't jinx us there with that, but uh, I think we're moving into some spring and... Uh, it's very pretty outside. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, we are uh, moving through First uh, John in the lectionary, and we've come across uh, some more of John's writing on what true love is, and uh, it, it's a it's a question that uh, gets asked all the time. Is you know what is love? And uh, I think as a pastor, there's been so many times uh, throughout my ministry that I've had this discussion with people that trying to figure out uh, what love is. And in fact, uh, for those of you a little older, um, there's been many, many songs written on it. Uh, we, we all know that from whatever era we grew up in. Uh, love was something that just uh, continued uh, to be a theme throughout that because it's the question of the universe, figuring out love and figuring out uh, true love. If you, if you go into like a definition of love, the, the world's definition is a, a simple one, an intense feeling of deep affection. Uh, you know, that's what the world describes love as, an intense feeling. Uh, and not just any old intense feeling, but an intense feeling of, of deep affection. Uh, but it actually, I think there's even a lot more to it than just uh, an intense feeling. And I can remember um, while I was at uh, Washington Choir House, we had a Sunday school teacher there that uh, was really great at teaching all ages, didn't matter whether it was teenagers or adults, whoever, he was just a very knowledgeable Bible person. And he would always ask this question. In fact, he would spend a couple of weeks on it every year because of how important that he felt that it was of having people truly understand what love is. And his question was, and I ask it to you this morning, is love a feeling or is it a decision? Now, if you had to answer that in order to get out of church today, think to yourself what that would be, a feeling or a decision. Now, what happens when I've asked that question throughout 
all the churches uh, that I've been a part of, I get all kinds of different answers. But the most common one is that a lot of people feel that it's a combination somehow of the two, that it's some part feeling, some part deciding. And so we have to dig a little deeper. We have to figure out when we love someone, is it something that begins to like feel inside of us? Now, if you, any great love story that you've ever read, watched, seen, observed, however you want to think of it, it's always been a moment in it where someone says, I feel like I'm falling in love with you, right? In some kind of way. Uh, I feel like I'm falling in love. I feel like I love this person. Because we're trying to put into words something that's very difficult for us as human beings to do, to describe what it means to be in love. And that's the other phrase that comes in. We say, well, I feel like I'm in love. And you know what happens with that, because then we can easily say, well, then I'm out of love. (laughs) I've fallen out of love with you. So really, when you ask the question, is love a feeling or a decision, you have to figure out truly what that means to you. Now, here's what John writes in the scripture. And the first one that we're going to look at is uh, we're going through those kind of letters of John, and it's 1 John 3, uh, and it begins with verse 16. And he starts it off just by point blank telling us, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, How can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Let me go on to the next one there, Jackson. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. You go on to the next one. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them, and this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit that he gave us. Now, if you go back to the beginning of that for me, uh, this is how we know what love is. And John plainly writes it out because Christ laid down his life for us, for you, for me. That is the meaning of love that the Bible puts there for us. Uh, In fact, if we look into it in the Greek, it's called agape love. And basically what it means is a love without conditions, meaning that you don't place anything on that love, that God gives you that love free, without any strings attached. It's just love. And... It comes in the form of sacrifice. Now, if we're looking at that biblical idea of love of sacrifice, then we know what love can look like a little bit. It means that no matter what happens between you and that person, no matter what goes back and forth between you, whether it's uh, an argument, whether it's hurt feelings, whether it's anger, whether it's loss, whether whatever, you still love that person because you choose to love them. If we just simply 
say that love is a feeling, well, feelings come and feelings go. You feel a lot of different things, right? Uh, you know, if you are an eternal optimist, each period of life brings you a moment where you say, I feel like this is going to be my year. I feel like this is going to be our moment. Or if you're a fan of a certain sports team, you say, you know, I feel like this is uh, the Reds or the Indians year. I feel like this is the Buckeyes time in life. Oh, whatever. As a person, even, we look at those moments and we say, I feel good about this. I feel like I'm headed in the right direction. Feelings are such that we can just put them out there any time that we want to. We can say, I feel happy. I feel sad. I feel upset. I feel angry. But how do we know when we feel loved, when we feel true love? And so the Bible is trying to teach us here what Jesus says for us. And he says that love is a sacrifice. Jesus gave up his life for you and for me because of real love. Love for us, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've headed, no matter where we've been, love, no strings attached. So how does that make you feel? When you say that you love someone, the reason I say that it's more a decision than a feeling, it's because truly you're deciding to love. You're deciding not to do all the other things in life, but you're deciding, I'm going to love this person. We often say that, well, you know, you, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family, right? Well, with that comes that choice, that decision to love your family, love your friends, love what's happening in your life. You see, that's what makes it a choice is because we have to figure out what it means to us to love. When Jesus loves us, it's about putting aside all of the things that we think that we need and trying to understand what his love means for us. What it means for you, what it means for me as we headed down as we head down this path of life. And truly, it's, it's an attitude. It's an attitude of figuring out what love is by saying, okay, God, you want me to love this person. You want me to love and be in this moment with you. Then show me what love is. And the Bible echoes out to us how can the love of God be in that person? Well, the love of God and the love of God occurs in you by how you are. It's not by what you say, but it's what you do and in the truth of what you do. That's why we say that love is a verb, right? Because it's not just something that you say, you can say, I love you to anything. We've shared this before. You can say, I love tacos, but I also love Jesus. Two completely different types of love, right? Uh, I don't know if the King of Kings would enjoy being put in the same mindset as loving tacos or loving the Buckeyes or loving whatever it is that you love. And so God says to us, if you're going to truly love, it should be not just in what you say, but what you do. And then here's the catch. Here's the part that really is scary, is 
if you want to show love and if you try to be love, if you aren't that, then maybe you never had God in your life in the first place. Because this is his command, to love one another as Jesus loved us. And that closing verse there, verse 24, the one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. So if you're keeping God's command of loving others, then and only then does the world look at you and say, that person has God's love. That person is God's love. And how do they know it? Well, they know it by the spirit of who we are, by our actions, by our truth, by not just what we say, but how we are. The world that we live in can be harsh, can be cruel, can be difficult. If you are true love and you are someone who's trying to share God's love with others, it'll come out in you and make the world want to say, I want what that person has. I want what that person has because look at how they look at things. They don't need material possessions. They don't need a homes, cars, clothes. I mean, do we need all those things? Sure. We don't want to walk around naked and homeless. Uh, people are going to look at you a little strange. They do not believe what you say. But you don't need so much of something that you don't have something that you can't give to somebody else, that you can't say to them. The Bible says it over and over. Jesus said, I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And so what is that true love for us? Well, John goes on in 1 John 4, verses 7 through 19. It's the next one that will be up on your screen. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Oops, I lost my place there. Because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that he might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Go on to the next one. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and, in, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Such powerful words. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Those words just kind of seem to echo out. And if you notice, he keeps repeating that phrase, this is how we know what love is. This is what love truly is. Because if we do not love John says, we don't know God. If you're not able to truly show love to someone, then the Bible's telling you, then maybe you don't know the one who loves you so much. 
because he is love. This is where we get the question from the world that we live in. Okay, well, if God is love, then why do we have all these things that happen that are so wrong in life? And the answer simply is this, because people are sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And so the glory of the Lord is simply love. Well, then if we're not the greatest people, then things don't always work out the way God intended. And so the Bible is echoing again and again that in order to show love among us, then we have to show that we're like Jesus. And that's the part that's difficult. It's difficult for you and for me to be like the perfect one, to be like Christ who laid down his life for you and for me so that we might be able to live eternally with him. And the only way the world can know that is through Jesus. And the only way they can see it is through you and me. Love in action. Love in action is so difficult because it's taking those moments and putting them to work, putting them in place and saying, here's love. This is what it looks like. This is how I'm going to show you it today. That's why each and every day we say, let's wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Because if we don't believe that it's God's day, then how are we supposed to truly each day show love to every person that we meet? So this is love. Not just that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice of atonement for our sins. And because of that moment, you and I have the ability to show love. So many people go through life and say, Boy, I wish I had the power of God. Well, you do. Not maybe in the way that you would wish it, but you have the power of God in you to love others. And it's not just something that God asks, asks of us. It's something that he commands us. He says, love others because I've loved you. So if you truly want to grow in your faith, if you truly want to show others what your faith looks like, then show them what love looks like. Show them what love looks like even when it's a moment that you feel like you can't show it. Even when it's a moment where they've lashed out at you, they've hurt you, they've pointed their finger at you and said, I'm not going to look to you for love because this is what you did to me. But really all they're saying is, is I'm afraid. I'm afraid because life has been really hard this year or life has been difficult during these moments that I've had. And John writes to us here at the end, there's no fear in love because perfect love dries out fear. And so if you are true love, if you've made that decision, and it's not just a feeling inside of you, you made that decision to love, then you have that perfect love in you. And you can tell them, don't be afraid. Come with me on this journey. Come with me, and I'll truly show you what love is. And that's that Christ died for you and for me. That's what love is. I'm 
I'm finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say Word of God speak Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak Finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, and all that I need is to be with you, and in the quiet, hear your voice, word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God's speak, would you pour down like rain? To be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is. It's okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have spent together learning more about you and worshiping your name. As we leave this place today, may we be committed to worshiping and serving in you in our daily lives. Lord, show us ways that we can bless and love others each and every single day. Amen. If you'll stand with us for our last song, this is also a new one. It's called Take It to the Cross. Nights, worries racing through your mind, you're breaking. Is your soul aching? You've got all, all the shame inside, the kind that people try to hide. Are you hurting? Are you searching? Please say you lay your burdens down. Take it to the cross, take it to the Savior, lay it at the feet of the mercy giver. Take it to the one who can wash your sins away, there's healing in his holy name. Come meet the one who can break your chains. If you've got pain, if you feel lost, if you want that burden off, take it to the cross. The God who knows your name, the one who's never gonna change. He's, He's waiting. waiting. He's, He's been, been waiting. Stop thinking that you're too far gone. You can't outrun a love that's strong. So give him who you are, give him what you're not, give him everything you've got. Take, take it to the cross, take it to the Savior, lay it at the feet of the mercy giver. Take it to the one who can wash your sins away, just heal it in his holy name. Come meet the one who can break your chains. If you got pain, 
If you feel lost, if you want that burden off, take it to the cross. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Take it to the cross, take it to the Savior. Lay it at the feet of the mercy giver. Take it to the one who can wash your sins away. His healing in his holy name. Come meet the one who can break your chains. If you got pain, if you feel lost, if you want that burden. Take it to the cross. Take it to the cross. Take it to the cross. Thank you guys so much for coming this morning, and we will see you next Sunday. See you later at night.